a lot of things that have happened over the last hundred years that have made us who we are and um, people's memories aren't that good you know that stuff doesn't last forever so it's it's important that that uh, we get a really good understanding of how we came to be in the early 1900s uh, there was a couple of things that were happening the dominating factors of people feeling a real need to do something and and to do something on their own for themselves. Farmers were needing a voice. They were needing um, a, an organization that would speak for them uniformly and, um, and advocate for them. What they saw was it was an opportunity to help themselves. That for once they were going to get behind an organization that didn't just take from them, it didn't just take their time and take their money to promote something that may or may not help them. Uh, they understood right away that the more they invested in that Farm Bureau, particularly in their personal time, the more they were going to get back out of it. The first county Farm Bureaus were a combination of not just farmers but, all, but different business people, people associated in education. The first Clinton County Farm Bureau president was the superintendent of schools in, in um, Clinton County. So there was clearly a, uh, a real strong tie to, the, to other business people within that locality. Uh, they all saw something important, something that uh, was going to benefit everybody. It was going to benefit the entire community to have farmers uh, organized and um, and doing better, you know, profiting more. The first, the first real organized membership drives happened in 1919. And the first one they did was in Hardin County. And in one week they signed up about 1,200 new members, and, um, which was extremely successful. And, and so that movement just sort of went across the state and you had, uh, you know, County Farm Bureau presidents and leaders from other counties that came in and worked and helped out uh, neighboring counties to, to build up that membership and, uh, uh, it, and it was pretty impressive. They, we, in that first year, uh, we had got to over 106,000 families. In that very first Iowa Farm Bureau meeting that they had in Marshalltown, December 27th in 1918, um, it was remarked in the newspaper accounts of that how these were real farmers that showed up to this meeting. These were real farmers with real issues and, um, and they found consensus fairly early on of how to deal with that, how, how to create policy for this organization. The Iowa Farm Bureau uh, came up with their, their uh, uh, statewide questionnaire, we call it the opinionaire, that uh, was uh, created by farmers, the questions were created by farmers, and then it was distributed across the state. So all the farmers and all the farm bureaus were answering the same questions. And that was the, the, really the first organized way that we got um, um, a really solid process of gaining that input from the farmers and then developing good solid policy from it. Because of the effort that was put into making this a grassroots organization, that the the counties, the county farm, the strength of that county farm bureau is really what um, has uh, it's what drives the farm bureau movement. It's 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 not the people in the home office. It's always the people in the county county farm bureau. there are some things that never change. People are still interested, even, even more so, where their food comes from. And they want that. There's a, there's a strong, almost spiritual connection to that. And shame on us if we don't help provide that connection to us. That's still our role. It's still, um, it's still about education. And, uh, and not just educating the public, it's about educating the farmer in how to deal with some of the social pressures that uh, come into farming as well. So 
it, it tells me that's that's job security for Farm Bureau. I mean, we're always going to be needed uh, as long as we have stayed true to that purpose.